and he's willing. Man, I'm really excited about something I was hearing while this whole thing was going on. Pam, Pam sang one little line out. You know how stuff, you know this, Pastor, how when you're, you know, you're going to preach or something and you're listening and something sticks you. It's like, ooh. And, and, and uh, she said, we're going to stop weeping because he's overcome. Come on. Come on. And it hit me because sometimes we don't understand what that means because we feel overcome. Because mm. sometimes we got so much stuff going on that we feel overcome and we don't understand what it means to stop weeping because he's overcome. Come on, that's right. And we think that he's overcome means everything's going the way we need it right now in the natural. And that's normally not true. Who's learned that? Who's figured that out? Okay? I want to explain quick because it's vital. I heard in my heart to explain this tonight that it's vital to get a healthy foundation and understand the why in him overcoming. And, the, and we, then they sang it. They said, where is your sting? Death. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Here's the deal. Here's how he's overcome. Through Christ, he's destroyed and defeated the power of death. Death's been defeated through Christ. He rose and we're justified. Christians are never going to die. Come on, come on. Your sin can no longer, the sin you committed can no longer separate you from God, ever. Come on, come on. You've been made one with Him. So the whole work of Holy Spirit is to redeem us back in Christ Jesus or through Christ Jesus to the Father and, and impute and impart his nature, the understanding of his love, his character, and make all things new as if man never straight away. Amen. He is overcome. Don't weep. He's overcome. The first way he's overcome is because he saved us from death and translated us into life. He's forgiven our sins and he qualified us to be a partaker of his life. Amen. You follow me? You have to camp there and let that be the greatest news of your life. You have to ask Holy Spirit to make that so real to you. Or just the fact that your car is not running right will seem bigger than that truth. That's right. Come on. Let alone a physical condition or a diagnosis or something hitting you out of the blue. And sometimes because we don't understand these things, it, I, I honestly believe, I'm just, it's not always healthy to share personal beliefs like this, but I'm just going to share this as a personal belief. I honestly believe that it makes us vulnerable to a lot of things when we don't have this foundation. Come on. Come on. I honestly believe that. Because it's never about dying. It's never about the fear of for your life and of your life. It's about the promise of life and the victory through Christ that we're going to live forever. And through every pressure, every trial, every adversity, we are going to glorify Him, magnify Him, reveal who He is and manifest His nature and character in the midst of the world because we love not our own lives unto death. Now, does that mean we don't want to receive the victory of healing or the restoration of finances, the restoration of family? No, absolutely not. But none of those things can ever dominate who you are when Christ in you is the truth about you. That's the truth about who you are for the long run. Come on, man. You have to start there as a Christian. We honestly haven't taught that in the church, especially in this country. We've taught it's about God doing good things for us, answering our prayers, meeting our needs, and fixing our lives. He did. He moved away sin and put himself inside of us and marked us for eternity, and we're never going to die. Come on. Come on. That is the biggest deal on the planet. Amen. Satan would love us to get concerned with a lot of other things because they're real. But that's number one right there. That's why you're always going to see joy in my life. Because that thing I'm preaching right now is my reality. Come on. I'm camping there. And I'm not pulling up the stakes. You get it? Come on. Come on. Look, it's... You, I use this all the time. It's, I love this story. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Nebuchadnezzar. He wants them to worship him. He makes an image. He thinks he's all that. He makes an image and wants everybody in, the, in his kingdom to bow and worship the image. And they, doo -doo 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 -doo. and there's these folks that didn't do that. And it came to his attention, and he was infuriated. And he came and he asked them, is it true you won't bow to my image? And, you don't bow to your image, you're not God. Amen. So, well, then we're going to give you another shot at it here. We're going to play these timbrels and blow these little horns. And when we do that, you're going to bow. And if you don't, we're going to throw you into that furnace over there. 
Now see, the enemy knows how to touch our lives. He, he hits his personal. He tries to hit your life. Come on. Sometimes these messages, we just, we just want everything to fix up, and these kind of messages aren't what we're expecting, but they are life-saving, life-changing, foundational truths that will keep you all the days of your life on this earth. Come, on. Come hell or high water. Come the biggest storm. How else do you think these men of God wrote these things inspired by the Holy Spirit to glory in your tribulation, to count it all joy when you suffer through various trials and things like this? There's a perspective they lived from. That gave him life. Yeah. How do you think Paul could be in chains and worshiping God with his back hanging open? Literally hanging open. Most men die from that kind of eating. And there he is in chains worshiping God. No other mentality, a single eye, no other option, no other way to think. Not, God, where are you? Why aren't you protecting me? All I'm trying to do is your will, God. I'm trying to save souls. You think you could watch my back? Come on. Come, on. Come on, that's a mentality that seems right to a man. It makes so much natural sense. But what it reveals is we love our own lives, and we're not in this thing just for his name's sake, and it makes us vulnerable for personal adversity. It's a big deal. But here's Paul, worshiping God. Because it's not about the stripes on his back and not about the chains around his wrist. It's about the freedom in his heart because he's not afraid of death. He's not afraid of people anymore, thank God. Amen. Come on. He's not ashamed of the gospel. And even though he looks like a fool, and he said we're the off-scouring of the earth, we're like to the world, we're like a bunch of idiots, is really what he was trying to say. Because the world didn't understand a mentality that would give up everything. Because every man for himself, it's all about covet and cleave and gather and keep and heap and hoard. And you can't bring God into your life for that. That doesn't work. That's not what it's all about. He's not just here for full bats and fat bones. <laughs> he's here to make you more like him. And he's here to make you fearless in the face of life. Because you love not your own life. Because you're never going to die. That's right. Come on, this is real. Paul understood that with glory in our tribulations. Boy, you can sure respect what he wrote because he sure had the opportunity to live what he preached, didn't he? Or did he preach out of what he lived? Come on. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Probably that one. So here's what the, 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 the Hebrew boys said. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There's this furnace over here. If you don't worship me, this image, you're going to get in there, throw it, and then they said, what is your fire to us? You have to love that. Come on. How can you threaten my life when my life's in him? How, you're going to hurl threats. What shall we fear? What can man do to me? The Lord is my help. There's truth to this, guys. So, so they're like, what's your fire to us? And he said, we have no need to answer you in this matter. It's, it's the fire. It's not even the fire. Isn't even a topic. And no, we're not worshiping you. You're not God. He's God. <laughs> Come on, that's so powerful. Yep. You know, today's Christianity. If we're not careful, we, we get threatened like that. We're praying in tongues and quoting no weapon formed against me shall prosper because we're afraid it might. <laughs> Just being real. <laughs> Is it all right if I'm real? Yeah. Come on, we do a lot of stuff because we're afraid. I think the devil's on to that. I don't think he's real intimidated when you're quoting all the scripture like a machine gun because you're scared half to death. <laughs> it's not the prayer of fear that saves us. It's the prayer of faith. Amen. And faith works through love, and love casts out fear. That's right. Wow. There's something about a relationship with God and knowing him. Oh, that I might know him. And this is eternal life, that you might know him. So you can worship God in chains with meat broken open on your back. Not just one fella, two fellas had that perspective. Side by side. Mm -hmm. Worshiping God. You know what happened. You know that story. Place shook. The anointing of God came in there and broke their chains and set them free. And didn't even just stop with them. All them other guys got broke free and all the doors swung open. And Come on. Choo! <laughs> 
And this is a whole thing you can preach out. He'd get fired up. Well, now he'd be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we preach, buddy, right there. But <laughs> I'll save that one for you. <laughs> I don't even let him ever lay hands on me or nothing, because I don't mean I'll be running around here. <laughs> <laughs> what is your fire to us? We have no need to answer you. James really raised countenance change. You know the story, right? Sure. Countenance change, he's enraged. <clears throat> and he makes it seven times hotter. That is not by accident. Why? Because when things increase in the natural, people shake. Yeah. You might take a stand when things are going shaky. And then you pray and things get shakier, that's when a lot of times we topple. Mm -hmm. And that's when it's revealed what foundation we're really on and how well we're really doing and how clear right. we're really seeing. Right. Isn't it amazing when Bartimaeus is sitting along the curb and Jesus walks by and he's yelling loud, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. It sounds like he yelled pretty loud because people told him to hush up, you're making a scene. And they were telling him to be quiet. Why? Because Jesus passed by. Now imagine the natural knowledge attached to that. Come on, man. You're making a scene. Knock it off. There's sick people everywhere. Who are you? Man, he already walked by you. If he wanted to stop, he would have stopped. If he was going to heal you, he would have healed you. If it was in his will today, he'd have already healed you. Probably wouldn't have had to holler. Da, 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 da. And they're telling him not. And Jesus, in your Bible, has, he's walking down the road. And in the natural, he has every reason to feel discouraged and, and think, well, I guess it's not God's will. I guess it's not God's time. I guess God doesn't want to do it. But you know Bartimaeus had to heard about Jesus. People were talking, and he had to hear he was the Christ and believe it because he called him son of David, which is a, a term that meant, I believe you're God's Messiah. Right. He said, Jesus, God's Messiah, God's Savior, the Savior of my life. The one that gives me sight. Have mercy on me. He yelled all the louder. He was given a lot of natural evidence to get quiet. So he got louder. Because he didn't look at the things that were seen. Because they're subject to change. You look to the things that are yet unseen. Because they're eternal. Come on. That's a good word. The church is telling him to chill. Come on. Hey, if God wanted to heal you, he'd have healed you. Look, if God wants to heal you, you'd already be healed. It's da, da, da. We got all that stuff now in the church because of experiences we've gone through. Right. Amen. And we've got this big, long list of language. And none of it agrees with the life of Jesus. Amen. None of those phrases have nothing to do with Jesus and the finished work. And we're going to get into that a little bit. Come on. <laughs> but he yells all the louder, and what's Jesus do? Come on, isn't that awesome? <laughs> then you say, well, I just got to yell a little louder? It's not that you yell a little louder. Anybody can cry out when they're in initial need. Anybody can pray the right prayers. Anybody can be taught what the Bible says and then quote it and hope it works. That's right. Come on. But when it looks like it ain't working or when it looks like he's walking by or when it looks like he's not going to do it, and you don't change your mind, wonder if that's when you find true faith. When you have every reason not to believe in the natural, and you say, yeah, but he said. Man, come on, church. Come on, church. We get the cancer diagnosis. We're already struggling because cancer's hurt way too many of us. Let's be honest. Can I be a friend and talk real right now? Cancer's hurt way too many of us. So when we get the cancer diagnosis, we're already in trouble because it's hurt way too many of us. So then we've prayed for a lot of people and we've seen it get worse and we've watched this course and we've written all the books of how God and why God and, and then we're already in the sentiment of all that. You follow me? So now you're all gun ho because it's Sister Sally and we love her and we ain't going to let cancer in. And we pray our prayer and all of a sudden we get the report that the cell count is higher. That stuff affects us more than we realize if our foundation isn't so sure in who we are and why. And if we're just using this gospel to get answers and get help, 
We're going to be in big trouble for a long time. Is it all right if I talk this straight and plain? Come on, I'm trying to help. This thing is real. We're in a war. The devil's a jerk. He doesn't believe that we love God. He believes we love ourselves. He believes we only need God. He doesn't believe we love God. He believes we need God. He believes we love our lives and our natural lives and our natural circumstances way more than we love God and His nature and His spirit in us. And He's out to prove it with adversity and affliction and pressures and putting you through stuff to watch you lose your hope and lose your disposition and lose your joy. Joy doesn't come from your circumstances. It comes from your salvation. It means you're saved and you have oneness with the Father and you're one with Him and your sins are forgiven. We were singing that song about the blood tonight, and I'm free at the end, and I'm thinking, no, I just had to fall on my knees because we're free. Yeah. Come on, we've all eaten the tree, and we stand before God as if we never have. Yeah. Come, on. Yeah. Come on. And none of those things, when you receive that and desire to not eat that tree, none of those things you've ever done can ever again legally, spiritually have another voice in your life if you understand that. Can't have a voice, a circumstance. Satan can't come and beat me up because of the things I've done wrong. Jesus Christ took and made those things of no avoid and no of no uh, effect, and made them null and void, and made a public spectrum of the powers that work through them. The handwriting against me. Every way I failed the law, He fulfilled the law and set me free. So Satan can't come through the law of sin and death and bite me because I've missed the mark. Even once I'm a Christian, once my heart's sincere and I ain't trying to miss it, and I'm not playing games with grace and messing with my conscience, I'm just waking up and I'm living sincere and I bump into the flesh sometime along the way. Satan doesn't have an issue in the matter. He doesn't have a voice because I completely, quickly confess it. God washes me. I'm cleansed. I'm right with him. There is nothing Satan can do about it. You have to keep your conscience crystal clear, squeaky clean, righteous. Yay, I love you. It's when you start playing the gospel, when you start not being diligent and studying to show yourself approved, and you start getting them convictions that you're not feeding your spirit, man, and you're really feeding your flesh, man, then you have a hard time having confidence in the good news. Come on. And you're your own worst enemy then. It's not even the devil. He's just taking cheap shots because you have yourself in a place where you've lost your confidence. And yet God is so loving and so merciful and so wonderful. But if your conscience isn't clear, you shipwreck faith. So important to surrender and yield to him. Amen. Guys, it's so important. If he loved us enough to die for us, we ought to die to ourselves. Amen. And, and get in a secret place of prayer and learn what that means by just getting in a secret place of prayer when nobody's looking and just yield yourself and ask for wisdom and ask the Holy Spirit to come and guide him, me in all truth and make me just like you and just keep me on the straight and narrow and just fill me with your goodness. That's intimacy. And he will. Amen. You get your eye really clear. The whole reason you're on the earth is for the image of God. Church, I preach it everywhere I go. The reason you and I are on the earth is the image of God, nothing less. The reason he made us is to be his children That's right. and look like our daddy. Yeah. Come on. Let us make man in our image. Man ate the tree, followed the stranger. Christ came, crushed the stranger's head, and made us live again. Amen. We ought to just give up the old put on the new. Amen? Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're ready. Seven times hotter. That is not a mistake. That is not an accident. That's what the devil believes. It's just like Bartimaeus. All of a sudden, you have a reason. That cancer illustration. All of a sudden, the cells get higher in Sally. And the only reason we're praying so aggressive a lot of times is because we're afraid of where it's going because we've seen it go there before. And what I believe he's trying to teach me and teach us in the body is it's no matter of striving and oh God and ah, it's a matter of understanding the finished work and his great love for us it's not even our prayer it's what we believe That's about right. what he accomplished That's right. That's his right. will in the matter but we got all these other scenarios that are fogging what we're calling his will they're fogging 
the picture that we're in because we have all these other things trying to speak into the present scenarios we're addressing. All these other things trying to have a voice when God has spoken through his son. You can't look to all these other things. You can't give those things a voice. You following me? God has spoken through his son. So Jesus' life is the voice of God. It's the word, the word made flesh. You find the Father through the Son. And there's a lot of things we say and believe in the church about a lot of situations that don't agree with the life of Jesus. Yeah. And we ought to take another look at them and readjust them. Because right. they're not producing faith or the power of God in our lives. And now we're just praying. And we've turned prayer into, hey, let's pray, who knows? It's relationship, it's command authority, it's the power of God. It's faith saying to the mountain and the mountain moving. Come on. It's not even praying to a God out here. It's releasing a God in here. Come on. Like sons and daughters. As the Father sent me, I send you. The things I do, you shall do also. All things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing, shall be done. Go into the world and make disciples in these signs. And if they believe and are baptized, I'll be saved. And these signs will follow those that believe. That means this thing will be reproduced and multiplied down through the generations through as many as would believe. believe. That's right. If you were the enemy, wouldn't you scramble the belief system of the Christian if you could? Yeah. Because every promise is to the believer. And we fight over what we believe and we're not sure what to believe and circumstances are a louder voice a lot of times than the word of God. Come on. Is it alright if I'm just talking like this? I just, it just seems like that's what I encounter all the time. It's working with me in my own life to just see clear in this whole area. Now in my personal life, sound like boasting, take it as, as what you want, time will tell. In my own life, I believe I understand this foundation. It's not about me ever. I really feel absolutely fearless. I feel like I couldn't be taken a cheap shot at. You say, oh my God, don't talk like that. The only reason you say it is because you'd probably be afraid to say what I'm saying. I'm not afraid. I'm not popping off. It doesn't matter what's happening to me. I'm born again. The Spirit of God's in me. I'm going to live forever. I'll never be separated from God. I'm one with Him. Yeah. That's in me. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? That's not arrogance. That's in me. That makes you fearless right. in this stuff. It's not about what a doctor might say. It's not about, oh, you're not getting any younger. Or da, 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 da. It's not about, oh, you hugged them. Didn't you know they had it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I have run into car accidents, about seven of them since I've been saved. And people, and I've gotten into my car, had their blood on me, and don't even think about it. Now, I'm not telling you to do that. I didn't do it on purpose. I didn't like, oh, I'm a son. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's just in the moment. You're helping. You're praying. And you get back to your car and you go, oh, wow. But thank God the gospel's big enough that you're not natural knowledge. <laughs> oh, my God. I wonder where they were about the life they were in. I can tell them boys were on drugs. I wonder if they had any needles sticking in them. And now I got their blood on me. God, help me. Shut up. I'm going <laughs> Come on. And the only reason you're doing that is because you feel vulnerable to the natural knowledge you've learned. Yeah. Come on. Instead of vulnerable to the spiritual truth that makes you free. Yeah. Come on. I'm preaching. <laughs> <laughs> you guys all right? Sorry. No, no. no. <laughs> you, six months ago, the Lord woke me up. I woke up early in the morning. He woke me up. I like to be woke up by the Lord. woke me up to personally talk to me about us, the church, feeling vulnerable to the world we live in. Because we've encountered so many things. We feed on natural knowledge. And then we say, well, yeah, but you've got to use wisdom, brother. And the reason we're saying we've got to use wisdom is because we filled ourselves with the natural knowledge. And now we've got this paradox. And we're trying to get through with faith and the supernatural, but using wisdom and 
And there's a real thing about all that. But we feel vulnerable. The bottom line is the only reason there's a thing is we really do feel vulnerable to the world we live in. And the truth is we were created to subdue the works of his hands. It's the truth. I, I'm not going to go on the vulnerable thing too much, but you understand what I mean by that? Like you read a news article, you read the latest finding, you, you get on the, you know, I, I, I don't, I have to be careful when I talk about this because I don't have, I don't, I'm not a computer guy. It's just because I have no interest. I don't even know when I'd have time. I don't even know that I'd ever turn a computer on. So I don't want you to think that I'm against computers or think it's the one eye beast and everybody's deceived. <laughs> I, the computer is an amazing blessing. The technology is incredible. And if it's used right, it can do a whole lot of good. True? At the same time, it's the, the age of knowledge, and then it's a fingertip away. Yeah. The knowledge is amazing on the internet, and you can just type in symptoms, you can type in diseases, you can talk to a friend, and they can just say, well, if you're feeling that way, maybe you have da 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 And you type in da 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 mm -hmm. when you go home, instead of automatically in your heart going, Whatever, da 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 da. God, I so appreciate the blood of Jesus and your amazing love for me. And I thank you that I can live in this world and be unafraid and unaffected and undaunted by fear. And I just thank you that your hand is upon my life and you're just mighty. God, and you're mighty in me. And you're fellowshipping the whole way home. You're communing with God. And when you get home, you forget about it. You don't even think about the computer. Or. And you have to deal with that knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how many people put that stuff in them and have that very symptom in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Wake up yeah. at night with that very thing that they just read. This yeah. fear comes in and they go, <gasps> and they're not communing and fellowshipping and receiving love. The reason they're praying is because deep inside they're afraid, they're vulnerable and a victim of whatever this thing is. This stuff's important to talk about. Man, we just don't want to be pushed like that and cattle ranched like that by circumstances. Come on, come on. I understand things are real. I understand that things come and they cost us things and there's pains. and there's. But receiving the love of God is number one. Amen. Never questioning his heart towards you, the work he could accomplish through Christ and growing in that truth, the truth. Jesus said, continue in my <coughs> word. He didn't say continue in the natural wisdom of the world. He said, continue in my word and you will <gasps> know the truth and the truth will make you free. Do you see how you'll transition from being vulnerable to the natural knowledge to truth that makes you free? Can when you guys hear me make uh, fun comments about, you know, you get things in the mail and you are now over 40. <laughs> you are more, I mean, isn't it amazing the world, these places keep track of your age. I mean, they just, they, just, they know who's 40 now. So they can mail you something to tell you you're more vulnerable than before for all this stuff. <laughs> And honestly, a lot of times we believe that. How many times have I heard a Christian say, well, I'm not getting any younger, you know. And there's things we subconsciously accept into our bodies because we're not any younger. When the blood of Jesus and the finished work of Christ, it never says that after you reach a certain point, it's null and void and of none effect, and, but thanks for buying time. Amen. <laughs> Glad we could help you for a while. <laughs> I'm being real. Where does it cut off? Where does the finished work of Christ draw a line? Pray, believe, receive all things except this and this and this once you hit 65. <laughs> it's not in there. I looked. Do our, our bodies run their course? Yeah. People say, well, yeah, look at your hair. That's just wisdom. That's, that's all that is. Come on, Dick. <laughs> Pretty secure to say that with a cabin. We're whacked and deceived. We'll find out in the end. <laughs> 
I tell people either I'm the most deceived man on the planet or I'm free. I'm banking on free. <laughs> Maybe I hope I'm not shocked one day, but I'm banking on free. <laughs> Paul says, I don't judge because I really don't know. I'll find out when I stand before you. But I am. I'm putting my chips down on free. Amen. I wonder if it's possible to be in relationship with God in such a way that fear is no longer in your life. Personal fear. Jesus said, fear not. 365 times it's recorded in your Bible that angels and, and, and messengers from the Lord, angels and God himself and Jesus said, don't be afraid. Fear not. Be not afraid. 365 days in a year. Spread them out across the year. Take one for every day. You've got the whole year covered. So there's never a time to be afraid. He says, do not be afraid. When is fear ever the kingdom? Come on, we talk about the kingdom all the time. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So the kingdom of God is the way God works and functions. It's the realm he abides in, and you abide there with him, seated in Christ in heavenly places. That is not a hype, hypo, super spiritual cliche that we just play the music louder and rah, rah on a Sunday. We're seated with him in Christ Jesus in heavenly places with every spiritual black thing. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. But these things that we get faced with and challenged with and encounter, if we don't grow in that truth, these things are so real, they hit us so close to home that they quickly rise above what we've established and grown in here. And now we're just trying to get help from God and trying to get delivered and trying to get a breakthrough. And all the while the stone's rolled away. And he's alive. Very important to grow in Him. Very important to get alone when nobody's looking. And give yourself to Him. Or the way every man thinks will be the way you think. The way every man feels will be the way you feel. The lies, the lies that seem true will still deceive us. In the way that seems right to man, we'll just continue to eat our lunch even though he is far. I am calling us passionately to a personal intimacy with being with God, guys, like we have never had before. Not just to enjoy the fun of what God's doing, but to know him. In a personal way where you understand he loves you. Where you understand he shed blood for you. <laughs> He sits at the right hand of God for you. He saw you before the worlds were even made. Before the foundation of the world, you were predestined to be a son and a daughter. Johnny saw you before anything was seen. You camp there. And you thank him that's true. And stop believing any other thing. Because any other thing is a lie. Do you understand that the topic I'm talking about right now isn't a ministry issue? It's a believing issue. That's right. The poor oil on you the rest of your life. You have to believe he loves you. Because the just live by faith. Why is that important? Because if God can get us living by faith, we won't live by feelings. We won't be a pushover to the devil. We won't be easy targets. If God can get us to quit living sensual and sense ruled, but live by faith, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> try to touch that. Because then he'll no longer get you to move on the way it seems, but you'll stand on the way it is. You follow me? It's a big deal what we're talking about. Any man that comes in must first believe that he is. is. <clears throat> that he is what? Everything he's declared himself to be through Christ. Yeah. And that he's the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Why? Because we've got to come by faith. In the midst of controversy, adversity, trials, things. We start there, guys. And from there we live our lives and go after all these other things that I believe are promised. Yeah. yeah.
Cameras running, everybody here. Do I believe it's the will of God to heal? Absolutely, undoubtedly, unquestionably. And I believe he's teaching us how to lay a hold of that will and manifest that will and minister that will to one another's situations. Amen. Do I believe it's the will of God to heal? Absolutely. Without question. He's a big yes and amen, amen. through Christ. Read your Bible. Every promise is yes and amen. <laughs> Every promise. It's that God didn't come with a gospel that said yes and no, or maybe so. <laughs> If it's a yes and no, you, you take yes and no together, you've got maybe so, maybe not. You marry those two and they got kids? Uh -oh. Come on. What fellowship does light have with darkness? It's let your yes be yes and your no be no. We have a gospel on the earth that was derived by the flesh. That's right. And it's a yes and no gospel. That's right. Maybe he will, maybe, maybe he won't. Because our circumstances have suggested that. That's right. But his son never taught us that. And Christ didn't come, yes and no. But yes and amen. There's no no in there. Is the will of God to save you? Yes! Is the will of God to love you? Yes! Is the will of God to redeem you and forgive you all your sins? Of course! Is the will of God to heal, restore, and deliver? Yes! Yes, 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 yes. The only reason we have a yes and no is because our circumstances and things that seem unanswered and create the question. But every promise is yes and amen. 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 To the glory of God through who knows the word? Us. To, the, to the glory of God through us. Us. Who's it flow through? Us. We probably ought to lay our hands on the sick because we believe. <laughs> Not because they're sick, because we believe. That's right. Did you get that? Come on. We're not just praying because they're sick, we're praying because we believe. Come on, we've been so needs driven, guys. Come on. We're not praying because they're sick. We're praying because we believe. Yes. Because we believe, we're going to pray on because now that they're sick, we realize woe is contained. The first sign of the believer isn't the healing, it's getting your hands in the sick. That's right. Well, the fact that a lot of us hesitate to do that proves that we either don't believe God will heal through us or we're not settled that it's his will to heal. A lot of times it's just that we're. We know he heals, but will he heal through me? And it just reveals their self-conscious issues that need to die in the communion place of God. Amen. Yeah. Rest assured, nothing can keep you from his presence but you. <laughs> now that the blood's been shed, you have every right to come boldly. It's the word of God. Can't talk me out of it. Can't even argue about it with me. Come boldly into the throne of grace because you see you have a high priest forever. Jesus, the Son of God. Settle. Come boldly and meet with him and begin to grow in a reality and yeah. an understanding of his love. Don't yeah. let anything keep you from going through that door. Not one reason, not one excuse on the planet is valid. Mm -hmm. There's not a yell but on the earth that can be valid now that Christ has come. He's calling us to his presence. It's the whole reason he came to get us back as sons and daughters. Right? So if he shed his blood while we were yet sinners, how much more? Now that he reconciled us through the death, will he save us through his life? If our lives were all whacked out and we were way out left field and he still died for us, how much more now that we care and want to be right with God will he just show us his salvation through the living son? Come on. Come on, it's in the I read that book. <laughs> it's in there. It's in there, isn't it? Is it in yours? It's in mine. It's amazing. <laughs> It's the word of God. Yeah. I'm backtracking. Them Hebrew boys? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't finish something. They said something to that king. They said, you know what? Now this isn't a cop out. It's establishing the foundation of their heart and their faith. And I believe they're saying to the king, and you know what, king? You need to know something. Even if he doesn't save us, that's right. you need to know he's God. That's right. Now that's loving not your own life unto death. You're not under the pressure like all the chips are down. All the I I've told people for years, man, even if you lose a spouse, a child, a loved one, and you've contended, all the more reason to contend all the more. 
because we know this thing through the word is possible and we can't back off and take personal loss personal to where we don't grow up in him. And we can't establish a belief through our own experience, through loving our own life and taking the physical personal loss without an eternal view helping us to press on all the more because of the loss. Come on. If I lost something that close in my life, I'd have all the more passion to yeah. get that revelation yeah, right. because other people are going to need that authority yeah, and anointing right. in that's my life right. at some yeah, point. Anybody right. can get discouraged, take it as a slap in the face, and draw back. That's right. Come on. We can't even give ourselves permission to do that, guys. That's right. And thank God we have to give ourselves permission to talk this plane without being hurt and offended because we've all suffered loss in some way, shape, or form, haven't we? <laughs> we have. All the more reason to be diligent and go after God all the more. Amen. True? True. Come on. That's a good word. Man, if the devil ever gets us on our heels and we start complaining and griping, feeling self-sorrowful and mm -hmm. sorry for ourselves and complaining and just <laughs> one of the saddest things, just wanting out of here. Just want now to hear. Watch people get pummeled just want now to hear. It's not your call to want out of here. It's your call to want him in you more vibrantly than ever before. Yes. To crush everything around your life that's not God. Mm. It's not time to say get me out of here. It's time to say get in me more. Yeah. <laughs> Serious. Come on. I'll read one quick scripture. You guys gave me the mic late, by the way. So. <laughs> First Peter. I do this in personal counseling a lot. First Peter chapter 1. It's on my heart right now. <laughs> Miss Tammy. We counsel this a lot, don't we? We have over the years. It's good. Miss Tammy came up to me in the leadership banquet and she said, it's become hers. Her eyes are all lit up. And... Uh, it's true. She said, you know, you told me this over and over and over. And she kept calling about certain things. And I'll take her to the scripture. I do it all the time. I love is patient. I don't, I don't say, oh, they're not getting it. I thank God for the seed every time I open my mouth and speak into somebody's life. I thank God that he's planting something. I thank God that if you sow truth, there's freedom coming. Come on. Without truth, there's no hope of freedom. Most of the time, people don't need ministry over the phone. They need to hear the truth about their situation and what they're feeling. And they need to make sense of what it really is that they're in. And they got to look from God's perspective and not just through man. You see what I'm saying? We do a lot more ministering to people in the way of just praying, which prayer seems good and it's right. And I know where to pray always for all men in the, in the sense of just intercede and supplication. But a lot of people need the ministry of truth. Jesus was the ministry of truth. Do you understand that? We beheld him in grace and truth. He was the truth about God and us. Jesus. Amen? And the word of God is amazing. Let's do this quick. And uh, that's not a joke. Let's do this quick. <laughs> I'm serious. And uh, we're going to pray. Blessed, where is did Ryan, is Ryan in here? Did he come in? Clary's holding up the back wall. He was. Is he here? Yeah, skip or get him for me if you can. Verse 3. Blessed be the God, 1 Peter chapter 1, this is going to be good. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope. So he birthed us into a living hope, a hope that's alive inside of us through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. See how you have to make that first? He's starting here. If that's not first in your life, life will overwhelm you. Come on. Come on. If that's not first, if that doesn't become the joy of your heart and the foundation of your life and the eternal truth of your identity and who you are, life will just slap you in the face till it seems to slap the life out of you. Are you, all, are you all getting what I'm saying? Yeah. See, this is first. A living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. It, it, it has to do with God towards us. It's God. He's come through Christ towards us to save us and rescue us and, and give us the truth that will make us free to get us on track of the why we're alive and who we are now because of him and what it's all about. He's made sense of things. Jesus has come and exposed through the life and made sense of things. Now I understand my life. 
I know why I'm alive. I'm alive to reveal the nature of God in the midst of life. I'm alive to walk in him and him walk in me. I'm alive to be a son connected through the blood of Jesus Christ to the Father forever. Yay. I'm not just alive to have a good day. I'm not just alive for just things to go rosy for me. Who's ever found Christians say it all the time? The more hungry I get, I'm seeking God and da da da. And you know, it's just like, oh, hell break loose. I just had a lady tell me on the phone that she's not listening to the word anymore and preaching because when she does, World War III breaks out. So she, I said, honey, then you're losing by default. It's like the children of Israel and Goliath. Just because nobody went out and faced him, they were already in bondage all them days. They were under his torment, under his threat, under his appearance. They were living in fear, yet they were in covenant with God. And just the fact that nobody went out and stood their ground, they were losing by default just because they didn't face him. They were already lost. So you're not going to go and get the word because the devil's going to punch me or I'm not going to pray for the sick because then I might get sick. And I'm not. That's just saying I'm vulnerable. Lay your hands on the sick. It has nothing to do with the devil getting you. Come on, the more you grow in this thing, and the more, uh, I, I heard several ministers over the years preach it out like in the ranks of the military. The higher you rise in authority, the more protection you have around you. Don't always just think high, higher levels, higher devils. <coughs> higher levels, greater authority, greater anointing, greater victory, greater, more people free. Yay, yay, yay. Because if it was true that I'm just going to get slayed down because I'm grown up, God set me up to get cut down. There's fear in that. Do you hear fear in that and self-preservation? And now I'm afraid to get more of God because I'm going to be more of a target. People come up to me in meetings and something. They say, man, I really, you know, I'm like, wow, I, the devil must really hate you. I said, honey, he hates you too. <laughs> it's like, I think she tries to know he really hates you. He just really hates us all because we're created in God's image and he's a loser. Come on, and he wants you to be a loser. He wants to make you like him. He's the one that's hopeless. He has no chance for change. He wants you to look in the mirror and see the same old instead of Christ in you. He's the one that has no hope, and he wants you to give up. He's freaked out and afraid. When they saw Jesus in the flesh, they went, Whoa! Didn't they? More like, <laughs> there was a whole group of them one time. They said, don't cast us into the abyss. Why? Because he could. Because he's Lord. And he's full of authority. And they know it. And they don't want you to know what they know. They want you to be self-conscious and self-identified. <laughs> they don't want you to ever see what they know. So they just keep nitpicking, nitpicking and poking and prodding and keeping your eyes off the truth so you're never really free. So you're in all the right places and all the right atmospheres, but never really free. Come on. It's not going to happen to us. Come on. Come on. He fears the Lord. And he is so afraid that one day you will see who Christ is in you. And you'll no longer be afraid. That doesn't make you arrogant. It makes you confident in Him. Yeah. And you understand who you are on the earth. Yeah. It doesn't make you arrogant. Don't you be afraid of seeming presumptuous. When Jesus walked the earth, they thought, Oh, you proudful thing, you. No, you happen to know who He was and where He came from and where He was going. Yeah. Me and the Father are one and I always do the things yeah. that please Him. And He had zero fear of man Hallelujah. and zero fear of the devil. And the world called him proud and blasphemous. We think confidence is pride. And yet the Bible says don't you throw away your confidence. And come boldly into the throne. It talks about confidence a lot. Confidence isn't pride. That's right. Confidence is knowing your covenant. Knowing God's yeah. love for you. Come on. Yeah. Man. Just think of that. Don't cast us into the bench. They had him outnumbered. It was a legion. It was just Jesus in the flesh. Wasn't even Jesus, Son of God, it was Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah. 
Paul, anointed by God. But Jesus to lay down his glory and reputation and God had to anoint him because he laid it all down and he modeled a life we're created to live and said, follow me. And as I do, you'll do also. And as right. the Father sent me, I'm sending you. You're the body of Christ, the embodiment of my power. Now go and do what I've created you to do. Amen. Amen. Cool, that's simple. That's undebatable. That is so everywhere through this book. Yeah. <laughs> through God and a man, a legion. Don't cast us into the abyss. Why? Because he could. He had the authority to smoke and rise. So what do you think happened? So well, I love that story because they were under the law, and you know, swine was forbidden to the Jewish folks, the Israelites. So that was that was that was forbidden. Me, that was cursed. Swine was cursed. But you couldn't sit and have pork and ham. You were like, that was pagan. That was cursed. So guess what they guess what they said? Watch, watch. Oh, it just brings truth and life brings everything in its right perspective. Don't cast us into the abyss. Hey, cast us where it's cursed. Yeah, yeah. Put us where we belong. <laughs> cursed. Yeah. Hey, we're cursed. Cursed is good. <laughs> cursed works. See how weird that is? So so it wasn't like they had a plea bargain. They found leniency with the judge. Oh, good, we're not in the abyss, we're in the swine. <laughs> no, they're in what's cursed, and they all ran off a cliff and died. What happened to all those spirits? Yeah. <laughs> it's a whole other subject. Don't write me even letters on that one. I don't even know if I'm going to get into that one. <laughs> Did you hear what they did? Hey, don't just cast this into the swine. Swine was forbidden. Swine was unacceptable. Swine was cursed. And Jesus didn't have one bit of a problem with that. It wasn't a flea bargain, guys. He wasn't doing them a favor. He was marking them for what they were. Yeah. Go where you belong. Go where it's cursed, because that's what you are. Why does he want us to? Why is the first sign? of a believer to cast out devils because we're not cursed. Come on. We've been blessed and we're now the children of God. Amen. We've been redeemed from the curse. But the first sign of the believer is casting out devils. I told you that story that time. I remember I, my wife was in Montana when I called her on that. That, 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 that Shiite Muslim girl came to a service and the Spirit of God came upon her. She fell on the floor and went into a trance and had the most look of terror and fear on her face that I've ever seen on a human being in my life. She's collapsed on the floor, and she's looking up at the ceiling like this. I was preaching on the love of God and who we are in Christ and in our value through the cross. And she came up and asked for Jesus and said, I want to be filled with him. She ain't Muslim her whole life. That's those 5% radicals that believe you're infidels, and if they kill you, they'll get rewards forever from Allah. Militantly taught and trained. She said, I want this Jesus. And then I looked and I, I mean, I'm not the brightest fellow, but I, I'm getting better. My hair's changing. <laughs> I, I looked and I said, this is demonic. <laughs> I said, fear, fear. See, you have these experiences that put passion in you. They put, they, they put militants in you. I looked and I said, Lord, what's going on? That's obviously demonic. Holy Spirit said, the spirit that's bound her her whole life is generational spirit. We, now, I'm not being mean. I'm not being sarcastic. But when we hear those phrases, we're like, ooh. The only reason we go, ooh, is because we're not going, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is not like, oh, my God, Father, it's a generational spirit. <laughs> Hold my hand. <laughs> It's a whole generation spirit thing. 
has her since she was born. It was on her. She grew up in this thing. The spirit that has bound her her whole life, is what I heard, is beholding the face of the Son of God. <laughs> and what do you do but stand there and go, wow. I cried for three days after this experience. Because I knew in my heart, if I knew the background, I would have tried real hard to pray right and pray a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. I knew that. I knew that if I had foreknowledge of her life, I would have tried to pray right. I got a vision when the Lord said that she was beholding the face of the Son of God. I got a vision. It was just a flash. You know what I mean by that? Yeah. Just boom, and it was done. Jesus was straddling this girl. He was, it was a big ceiling. He was as tall as the building. And he was standing, straddling over her like this. I just got the vision like that. I went, oh, 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 oh. was about as the biggest barnyard granny. Because he were on the same team. Like, I represent him. He's not ashamed to call me brother in. Uh, I'm like way behind, way slow in the flesh. I'm defeated, don't have a chance of helping this girl. But because of him, I'm the one that now comes into play because of him. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Uh, and I'm like, Whoa. on that thing that's, right. that's trying to lie to her. Jesus is calling it out. That's right. And guess what it was doing? <laughs> <laughs> Serious. So all of a sudden I'm realizing some things. Yeah. All I need to know is he's Lord. Yeah. That's all I need to know. I need to be clear in my conscience and know he's Lord. That's all I need to know. He's Lord. In my name, Jesus said, if, if I cast spirits out by the finger of God, that means the anointing and power. It says with a word, he casts out spirits in the multitude. Probably go. Yes, yes. <laughs> I thought about it for a while, and I'm thinking he probably said go. <laughs> or out. Yeah. Or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. But it was a word. He cast them out with the word. The word. It must be the authority, must be the anointing. Yeah. It must be heaven. Yeah. 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 It must be light greater than dark. Yeah. So I watched this firsthand. I watched this girl like this. And, and it was amazing because the Lord said that, that she's beholding the face of the Son of God. And what hit me was the thing's terrified of Jesus. Well, he's not necessarily terrified of us because we don't know who we are in Jesus. And he's got so many vulnerabilities. It's like a, it's like a man that I heard a testimony of that faced a witch in a conference of 5,000. And she was putting curses and the intercessors wanted to go downstairs and hold hands and pray. And he said, what are you talking about? Just leave her alone. Just diffuse it. She wants you to fuss over her. That's right. She wants you to pay her attention. She right. wants you to get your eyes off of Jesus and right. onto her. Right. She loves when the worship's right and everybody's glancing, wondering what they're doing instead of, I love you, That's Jesus. Right. Right. Why else would a witch walk in with her hair and her, all her garb on and walk in? Because she knows the church is going to go, oh, my God, shut up. That's what we do. And we run downstairs and pray because we're nervous. And we're actually giving her more power. He said, diffuse it, diffuse it. All of a sudden, his interpreter wasn't saying what he was saying. And the people in the front were saying, he ain't saying what you're saying. And he looked back and she's sitting there chanting and doing the stuff. And he realized she's, she's affecting the mind of my interpreter. So he come off the steps and went down to confront her. 5,000 people. And guess what she does? She stands up and goes. In front of her, see, that's what she wants. She wants everybody to be in awe of her. Right. If you listen to the story, it's powerful because she started praying in a tongue, loud. 
And he said, I got up to her and she stood and raised. He said, that gown was blowing silver streaks in her cold black hair, big, long black nails, black lipstick. He said, oh, she was scary. He was being funny. He was laughing. He said, she was scary. And he said, she was praying in a tongue. And I thought, I'm going to try it too. <laughs> so he started praying in a tongue. And he was praying in, in, his, in other tongues by the Spirit. And all of a sudden he said, fire of God. And when he yelled fire, it looked like you shot this lady. And she just went poof. And she had 11 little disciples sitting in the row with her. And he looked at the little disciples and they all went like this because their leader's laying out, looks like she's dead. Well, he said pandemonium broke out because everybody's freaked out and afraid because of the wielding of power. Everybody gets up and starts running to the altar. They wanted to be where the ministers were. The people were like, oh my God, this ain't a movie. This is real. This is ah! He said they were afraid. They all ran up front. While they're praying for the sick and preachers, people getting saved, he feels this tugging on his pants leg. Multitude of people thronging. He looks, here it's the lady. She clawed through the people and was holding his leg, chanting curses. He's praying for the sick and miracles are happening. We're afraid to be slimed. He's just filled with Christ. She's going, he says, fire of God. So he keeps praying for the sick. Next thing you know, he thought, this woman is out of her mind. He said, I lifted my head. I was ready to give her another blast of the fire of God. And she went, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. On her knees. Isn't that a good setting? Picture that. She's down on her knees. She says, no, 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 no. Now watch what she said. I bawled for a half hour and laid on my face in my blue room upstairs when I watched this video because of the Holy Spirit speaking to me. No, 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 no. This I cannot defeat, now don't get caught up in the glory and the hype of what she said because it's powerful. Just listen. I cannot defeat your Jesus, so I will bow to him. And all her little disciples got born again too. They all got saved. They went, now watch. Holy Spirit said, Dan, what about your Jesus? That's a word. Whoa. Who knows the Lord our God is one? But what's your revelation of Jesus? Do you have a greater revelation of the devil than him? Do you have a greater revelation? Here's what the Lord showed me. That woman was creating havoc in Europe. And she was getting so bold that she walked into that conference fully guarded because she was putting things on people in churches and walking into churches. And she started in smaller groups and worked her way up and gained to a place where she thought, I got greater authority than their Jesus. But she bumped into a man that had a greater Jesus than what she bumped into. I cannot defeat your Jesus. And the Lord showed me that she had beat and defeated the confession of a whole lot of other people's Jesus. And walked fully guarded into a conference of 5,000 because she believed she was rising in the ranks. And she bumped into a revelation of Christ in a man. And said, I cannot defeat him, so I will bow to him. They all got born again. And Holy Spirit said, Dan, what about your Jesus? And I just bawled because I want him more. I don't want to be afraid. I, I want to walk up and say, fire of God because of love and compassion, not because you wicked witch of the West, you need that. <laughs> no, because she's lost and confused and yeah. deceived. She's a living soul that's on the wrong side of the fence. She's, she's living way out of character, destiny, and created value. It's not because you're offended by her. You're praying for her. And you want the fire of God to come and burn every foul thing out. He said, what about your Jesus? This lady's on the floor. I know right where I'm at here. I'm trying to wrap it up. She's on the floor. This is back to the Shiite Muslim. And I said, now you see. And now, I mean, I was, I was right around. Her. Now you see and now you understand why you have to come out of her. Because he is Lord. Oh, it was so amazing. She went. Times more shrill, pitchy, it was ear pierced with a loud cry, with a loud shriek, with a loud. Would you ever read that in your Bible? Why? Because I prayed the right prayer? Because Jesus sovereignly, mercifully came and taught me a revelation that all I need to know is He is Lord. 
That's all he wants me to know. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. Why did that legion cower and bow? Are you here to torment us? Because he is Lord. <gasps> Holy Spirit said, stand her up. Get her up. I told you guys, get her up. Stand her up. I was just learning. I was learning as we were going. You know, I look like I know what I'm doing, and almost always I don't. You just look like you learn to look like you know. That <laughs> was so far behind. One time a lady had lupus. I was praying for her, and her hands was all clenched like that. I'm telling it to come out. And when I first prayed, the man that was standing behind her almost fell over, and she's shook, and I'm praying, and I'm looking at her hands, and the Lord said, I almost chuckled, Dan. It came out when you told it to. That's just my presence on her, my power. That's why her hands are clenched like that. Just tell her to open her hands. I'm, I'm looking at her hands thinking until she opens her hands, she ain't free. So I'm like, come out, come out. I said, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Come out, come out. And the Lord finally was like, oh, Lord. Yeah, so, so watch what I did. When it's a good idea when you hear the Lord just say what he's saying. Because then it's like a sports cast announcer. It's like I knew. It's like I'm like I'm the one that's in the know now. Because people are thinking he is so walking with the Lord. And I'm like, oh brother. I'm like, come out, come out, here. And he said, and I said, ma'am, the reason your hands are clenched that's the power of God on you. That thing came out of you. Open your hands. She went, oh, she, oh, she's born. And everybody said, wow. And I'm thinking, yeah. Three days late, I get it. <laughs> but they think I'm like, you know, right on it, baby. <laughs> A lot of times you raise your voice and do all that. It's because you're intimidated. We stood her up. said, look at me, honey. Look at right now. It's Jesus loves you. He shed his blood for you and gave his life for you. She's crying. I love Jesus. Praise the Jesus. And I'm a Shiite Muslim. Born again for a minute. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Shut up. Works for me. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So we went and prayed for other folks. That thing bowed because he's Lord. We just need to keep growing in that he's Lord. And the first reason we're saved is to be called back into life eternal. This thing here, oh gosh, is it a quarter of ten? Look at this. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. I just panicked when I looked at my watch. I almost fell apart. I'll do this. I'll just read. <laughs> Two minute hair, I'm not going to preach. It's not a joke. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. Please don't make sure you have to repent for this. <laughs> to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away reserved in heaven for you. You are kept by the power of God through faith. Faith. faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. That means this thing's going to get clearer and greater. I'm preaching. In this, you <laughs> greatly look. In this, in this, come on, guys. In this, you greatly rejoice. Why? It's your foundation. It's the foundational truth of your life. You're sealed for eternity. Nothing can get you now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on. Wonder if that's true. I wonder if you believe it. Wonder if you believe it. Wonder if something comes to try to try you and test you. Wonder if it seems like your body is just eroding away because of some mysterious wicked disease. And yet your heart is so founded in this. None of that stuff can touch you, shake you, or move you. Might be amazed the place you pray from then. Might be amazed the place you proclaim from and prophesy. And it's not just trying to get a breakthrough. It's because you understand you already have. It's a big difference. Way big difference. This is who you are in this, in this, nothing else. In this, you greatly rejoice. Watch, watch, though now. See, he knows, God knows. He is so sensitive to our hearts. He knows that we're going through trials and getting challenged. But he tells you where to be founded and where to rest your faith. And then he says, even though now, for a little while. Oh, just a little while. It seems like forever to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a whisper, baby. It's a light. It's a moment of light affliction compared to the eternal weight of glory. It's just a little window of time. Watch this. Though now for a little while, if need be, it's an amazing phrase there, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Who's ever been grieved by various trials? Mm -hmm. Right? Watch, watch. That the genuineness, this doesn't mean God is sovereignly orchestrating them. It means that he's just letting them unfold. Because Satan's there to break you, but he's running the risk of making you. He's trying to trash your life. He believes he can break you. But if you hold on in God, he's actually helping affirm and make you. He's springboarding you to a greater revelation. That's why you glory in tribulation because it brings perseverance, perseverance, character, character, hope. And hope can't disappoint because God's love is in you by the Spirit of God. Come on, yeah, that's, a good one. Come on that's so powerful. Yeah. It's the Word of God, man. I read the book. <laughs> Watch. That the genuineness. The genuineness, wow. The genuineness. Mm. Oh, you get this. I mean, you getting that? The genuineness. I tell you what, you can't touch genuine. When it's real, you can't touch real. Come on. The genuine, that the genuineness of your faith. <coughs> You know, in that Hebrew story, that Shadrach, Meshach thing, Jesus came in that fire. He did not bring a bunch of angels with buckets of water and douse that fire. No. There's a message there. He didn't honor it enough to put it out. He's Lord over it. So he just yeah. took off their bands and bonds right in the center of it and left it rage all around them. But he kept them unscathed. And they came out without a smell of smoke. You didn't look at them and, whoa, what happened to you, brother? Well, just pray for me, man. I'm hanging in there. I've been in the wilderness, brother. That's what we, I've been in a wilderness place, man. Really? Well, you ought to come out with the spirit of power. That was Jesus. Or it was the Hebrews, where it was self-conscious, and they died there and wandered there until they died. Same wilderness, same God, same challenges. That's a good one. They died. Jesus came out in the spirit of power. They were self-centered. He was selfless. They died. He's anointed. All about me, all about God and them. <clears throat> what about just being fearless and leaving an example to your kids and family and all the people around you? Leaving a legacy for not loving your own life unto death in the face of trials. Mm -hmm. Oh, sending a message to the world. That the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it's tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now watch. Whom having not seen, you love. Because you understand what he did and why. He forgave you of every sin and redeemed your value back to the Father, to your own heart. Showed you why you're even alive and why you're on the earth. You created for God's image to be one with his spirit and to manifest his nature through your life, in your life, throughout your life. That's what I mean. Make sense? Though now you do not see him, who's ever been in circumstances like, God, where are you? Even thou now you don't see him yet, believing whole. Believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible, full of glory. This is a big deal. Stay with me. I know it's late. It's 5 of 10. Watch. You rejoice with joy inexpressible, full of glory, because you're believing, receiving what? The end of your faith, the consummation of your faith, the end of your faith, the end. Who wants to reach the consummation of your faith? But the end result, the fruit of your faith is what that means. Watch. Your spirit's saved. Watch. It's the soul. It's the battlefield. It's the soul. It's, it's every thought that rises above. You cast it down. Here's where the war is. Who's ever learned that right here is the battle point? Why? Because when man listened to the stranger's voice over God, he became subservient to it. And when God came and spoke on the earth, it sounded strange because they were used to strange. So truth sounded strange. And now God wants us renewed in the spirit of our mind and redeemed by thinking different. So we're saved in our spirit, but the end of our faith, faith takes us where? To the salvation of your to where your mind is functioning and working like it did in the garden before sin, before the stranger's voice, when you were one with God and just agreeing with who he is and what he said. 
the salvation of your soul. A place of peace and rest and clarity and soundness. No fear, no worry. Because yeah. you're in him and he's in you. So faith takes you where? To the salvation of your soul. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a salvation that needs to take place. Amen? Amen? Where's Ryan? There's Ryan. Hey, how available are you tonight? Are you, how, can, you remember how you helped me one time with water baptism? Are you in a place to do that? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. I don't want to put you on the spot, so be honest. Are you in a good place? <laughs> okay. See that young man? Everybody look back here. Wave your hands. The man. See him back here, Ryan? Isn't he awesome? Give him a shout. Listen. Listen. If you've never been born again, if you've never been water baptized, be really important to get born again and get water baptized. What is that? Praying prayer to go to heaven? Absolutely not. It's putting off an old life, an old will, an old motive, an old nature, whatever you thought was real, putting that off and saying, you know what? I'm surrendering my life. I've been a God unto myself. I thought I had the keys to the car, but I've been following the stranger's voice. I've been following another way. It's not his way. I want to give myself to the Lord. I want to yield myself so we can become one and his way can become my way. I want to put off the old and put on the new. Ryan will explain water baptism to you, and he will pray with you. You see him back in that corner? So in a minute, we're going to pray for all the sick, but if you need born again in this place, or you want to get water baptized tonight, water baptism is awesome. It's a saying goodbye to the old, saying goodbye to yourself. It's dying so you can live. Amen. It's where you go to die, the water baptism, so you can live and come up with a clear and good conscience before God. So it's the first day of the rest of your life. It's as if you never lived before. So if you need water baptized tonight and want to be and you've never been born again and saved and want to get right with God, even if you've been walking miles from the Lord and you're down in your heart, you know it's time to just come home and you've come to your senses like the prodigal. Why don't you let him put a ring on your finger and a robe and slippers on your feet and why don't you let him love you? And you go see that man back in the corner. You stay right there for me, okay, Ryan? So if you need that tonight... You look at these guys. They're on it, man. They are ready. They're cheering you all on to get water baptized and saved. Here's the deal. It's the will of God to heal because Christ shed his blood and rose from the dead for our justification, just as if we never sinned. Sin brought the fall of man and a lot of destruction and stuff to, to the human race, to our bodies, a lot of plagues on the earth. But Jesus took all that upon himself and was made to be sin so we could become righteous once again. It's by his stripes we're healed. It's a big deal. His blood was shed to forgive the act of our sin. His body was beaten, undescribable, to take the effects of sin out of our bodies. That's why we pray for the sick. Make sense? Yeah. There's a couple folks healed right here. I'm sure there was folks healed up here. I just know a couple people we were privileged to pray for over in this area. We're getting healed and good things were happening tonight. We want to pray for anybody else that still needs to be manifest in that healing. So here's what I want to do. I know it's late and I know y'all, some of you got to leave. But if you need prayer tonight and you're still feeling sick in your body and you need something to change, you need you to stand up to your feet. This is how we do it here. We're a, we're a believing house. Everybody's a minister. We don't pray long prayers. We're not prophesying. Be healed in Jesus' name. Pain come out of the body right. in the name of Jesus. I had two people during that whole prayer time come up and tell me of healings that they received one of the last times I've seen them. And that's just fun. I went back to a place I was 